Hey everybody, welcome back to Fitness Friday. And we're gonna have a fun chat today. We're gonna talk about um, some healthy ways to stay in line with your goals throughout the holiday season. I know a lot of you guys are following us on our six week challenge. And this is just a great way for you guys to get some tips on how to stick to those goals and how to make it through the holidays. So I wanna bring on my friend, Coach Idris. Here's his intro. Let me introduce you to my friend, Coach Idris. He is a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer with 25 years experience. Idris specializes in women's fitness through NASM. He is a nutritional counselor, certified EMT and LVN. He has worked helping hundreds of clients from high school to professional athletes and housewives to CEOs of companies to achieve their weight loss and fitness goals. He is the former 2002 Mr. USA bodybuilding champion with 20 years of competition experience. He's also an Air Force military veteran where he served in Desert Storm as a combat medic. Everybody help me welcome my friend, Coach Idris. Hey! <laughs> so you unmute me again. Wow, twice in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's funny. What's happening? How are you? I'm doing good. Just getting ready for this next week. And I will say one of my things that I have to make for Thanksgiving that everybody asks me to make are rolls. And so I am the hot bread. Butter, hot butter rolls. <laughs> plenty of butter yeah. on it. Yeah, I do Parker House rolls and I've been doing them for many, many years. And you can rub, you can rub, the, you can rub the grease in your hair and oh, yeah. shave out your beard with it after you eat the biscuits. <laughs> Well, you know, it might not shape my beard. I don't know. <laughs> you can just put it on your tips if it's dry. Hey, you know what? I probably need that a little bit. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, this is the time where we get, we kind of gorge on all that yummy food. And so I'm excited to have this conversation today. You guys, I pulled up a blog post from the Mayo Clinic. And we're going to kind of go over some of the healthy tips that they provided in this blog post and kind of give some, we're going to have Coach Idris expound on them and, you know, just kind of let you know how we feel and the direction you guys should go if you guys are struggling with any of these things. So should we get started? Here we go. <laughs> so I have it pulled up on my phone. I usually print it out, but my printer ran out of paper today, so. Fun times. Okay, so this blog post was written by Allie Worgen, and um, she's a registered dietitian and nutritionist at the Mayo Clinic um, Health System. So um, let's just start going down the line. So number one, what she has on her list is don't skip meals. So how do you, I think that's something that I've actually always done in the past just because I know I'm going to eat so much around like two o'clock when the big dinner comes. Um, if we're talking about Thanksgiving, I know this is kind of going to go for multiple parts of the holiday season, you know, Christmas dinner, um, Thanksgiving, but also holiday shopping and what that can do as well. But for me, for Thanksgiving dinner, I usually kind of skip the morning food just because I know that I'm going to kind of have this huge meal later on. What are your thoughts on that, Coach Idris? Uh, that's kind of something we were taught. <laughs> uh, we were taught that, you know, it, it makes it, it, think about it. It makes absolutely no sense to starve yourself so you can gorge yourself later on in the day. It makes no sense. It, yeah. I'm serious, it actually makes no sense. Um, when you eat, the, the biggest problem with Thanksgiving is like, <clears throat> probably 50% of the food is, car is, car is sugar. You know, carbs break down to sugar, breads, pies, sweets, out wine, cranberries. Like mo half of it is sugar. That's why people uh, fill up. That's why you get so full from it. You know, um, I never, I don't, I, eat, I don't eat any different on Thanksgiving day as I do any other day. The thing is, is you're usually busy and you just kind of miss them because you're out doing something or you're, 
you know how everybody's like, well, don't you're cooking and you smell the food and you're watching a football game and it's like, well, don't eat anything. You're gonna mess up. You're gonna mess up your appetite for later. You know, <laughs> if you only if you eat a little something something, you're not gonna mess up your appetite for later. You know, unless you eat a full meal every two hours, you're not gonna mess up your appetite for later. Like I tell people, you will get hungry again. So, um, and when you eat the dinner. I eat very little of everything. I take a little bit of all the stuff that I like. I take, you know, I don't, I, cause I can't eat that much anyway. I mean, how much can you really, really eat without before you start, you can't move, right? So I just eat a little bit of everything that I like, that I feel like eating. I'm not a person that eats everything out there, but I do eat what I, what I want, but I eat small amounts of all of it. And then the food goes like it's supposed to in about three hours. And then I'll eat some more again if I want to. And I think that's the thing that I, I never I never understand this about the mentality of a person who overeats anyway. Not necessarily somebody who's dealing with an issue of overeating, but just in general, like, oh, I'm a pig, my, I'm a pig out today. Um, <laughs> you're going to get hungry again. Why are you eating the whole thing? Like, you know, I can see if this is your last supper and you're never going to have another meal. But <laughs> if you're oh, gonna I eat all the food at that point in time, right? <laughs> huh? I'm going to eat all the food at that point in time. Yeah, you know, if, you, if you're if you on death row, it was your last meal. I'm not sure I'm going to eat everything on the table, right? <laughs> it's going to be coming out of my mouth. But, if, <laughs> but, you know, most of us aren't in that situation. We can eat again later. Yeah. We can actually eat again later. The same thing you just ate now that tastes so great, you can eat later. Now, I know somebody's out there using, you know, what we all... Well, it's different when it first comes out of the oven Nobody, very few people eat everything that comes from, because the oven ain't big enough for all the food on the table. <laughs> Half of that food is cold by the time the rest of the food comes. <laughs> so don't, you know, don't, don't be, make sense. Just make sense with your eating and just eat normal. And then when, when, when it's time to eat Thanksgiving dinner, enjoy those things that you don't normally have throughout the year that you like. And you can, the food, most people, the food is around for two or three days after Thanksgiving anyway. Yeah. One thing that I really loved about what you said, though, is take a little bit of everything instead of piling your food, your plate with normal portions for every side dish that's going right, to Right, right, right. Normally, you eat two, normally, most people in a regular eat a two course, three course meal. They don't eat a yeah. seven, <laughs> nine course meal. I know at my Thanksgiving dinners, we have like 20 different options for sides, that's right? Plan. So, you have like 90 things on the table. Like nobody has that on a normal basis. So how could you eat your normal portion size with 10 other, with 10 different, different dishes? So now just, just, I do a little, I'm serious, man. I do a little bit of sweet potato. I do a little bit of, I do a little bit of green beans, a little bit of this. And I usually can't even finish that plate. I I can't even finish that plate. So I think that if we have, if we're sensible, I think the word is sensible, sensible. Let's be sensible. Yeah. Eat, enjoy, enjoy the food, enjoy whatever it is you want to enjoy, but don't stuff yourself. Just enjoy it. That food will digest and do what it's supposed to do. And then about two, three hours later, especially if you have dinner, like some people have it around three or four, they have it earlier in the day. You're going to be hungry come five or six, seven o'clock at night. Yeah. And most people think, oh, I can't eat at night. I, I stopped eating before seven. You you know, eating, stopping, stopping your food before seven o'clock or eight o'clock just because it's nighttime doesn't, doesn't really mean you're going to lose weight. It's what you eat after seven. Not the fact that you eat. People who are competing eat meals until they go to bed. Some of us wake up in the middle of the night and have a meal in the refrigerator and eat it in the middle of the night. But it's usually just protein and vegetables. So enjoy yourself, guys. You know, I think what they're trying to tell you is, is don't change your normal routine. Do what you always do. And what I'm telling you to do on Thanksgiving Day is portion size. Just a little bit of all the stuff that you really feel like eating. And enjoy it, man. And and trust me, you'll be hungry again in about three or four hours, and you can enjoy enjoy some more of it. But it, but you won't be overeating, which is the problem. You won't be overeating. I'm gonna have to test this this year because I know in years past, like I don't think I ever become hungry again on Thanksgiving. I just think you stuff yourself, right? Yeah, I think I just like keep consuming food because it's there, right? So I'm gonna have to be a little bit more 
um, aware of the way that my body's feeling and what it needs. And I think that's something that we could all do because I know I'm stuffed all day long when it comes to Thanksgiving dinner. Because you eat all day long. You keep yeah. nibbling and nibbling and nibbling, stopped, and, nibbling right? and nibbling and nibbling and nibbling. Yeah, you just keep eating. I don't change my habits because of holidays. I, I don't. Like I people think, always say it to me. I, well, how come when you're on vacation, you don't? I'm like, I don't change the way I, I don't change who I am as a human being just because I'm on vacation. <laughs> I don't start. You know what? I'm on vacation. I think I'll smoke crack. Like, I'm not going to start doing things I don't normally do just because I'm on vacation. I'm, I'm pretty much still me on vacation. Yeah. And that's how I am with holidays. I still eat the way I eat. I just enjoy stuff that I don't usually eat. Yeah. I love that. And I think too, like if we talk about even like the holiday shopping, you know, I think that's where like I get into trouble where I might forget that I didn't, that I skipped a meal, you know? So being able to make sure that you get your regular meals in and plan for it, you know, you're going to be all day shopping. And so plan for it now instead of yes, plan for it. You know, every I don't care where you are. Everybody has healthier type of dishes everywhere you go. And you don't even have to make it a big deal. You can just have like you could be out and have a little slice of pizza or a little something just to get you through the chop shopping because you're ripping and running and you're going to use those carbs anyway because you're out busy, right? So you're going to use those carbs. Like I, I live my life basically going, okay, what am I doing right now and what should I be eating right now? If I'm going to bed, what should I be eating? When I'm waking up and I got a lot to do, what should I eat? I'm going to be gone for five hours. I might not be able to get to any food I want. What should I eat? What, yeah. should, I bring? what should I bring with me? Bring a protein shake. So that I don't have to buy go to McDonald's. I, I that but I've been doing this for also I've been doing this for almost <laughs> 40 years. <laughs> but well, you know what's crazy about that is I, more the more people that I talk to that have really gotten down like a healthy routine with their diet and nutrition, they all say the same thing. And I think that's a mindset thing where you have to train your brain to think that food is for fueling your body and not just for the satisfaction of the taste that's going into your mouth. Right? And, and you also have to stop acting like you can't change. I, the, yeah. the, the, nothing bugs me more than somebody telling me who, they, well, it's just the way I am. Well, it sucks. Change the way you are because you're not, you know, it's not good. It's not working for you. So I used to say that too. <laughs> that's why I say that. I used to go, well, it's just the way I am. And, and one of my clients was like, yeah, but is it good? And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> But that's what this whole challenge is that we're doing too, right? Is we're trying to get this habits change, you guys. Like we are trying to dial it in so that when January comes, you'll already have those good habits in place and just be able to start the year off right. So I love that. I love that. All right. So, so number two, contribute a healthy dish. I think this one's actually a really good one with all of the different holiday parties that people go to because everybody wants to make their favorite buttery, sugary dessert or food item, right? But who's going to bring the healthy item? And there's a lot of fun dishes that you can still make that are healthy. So. It, depends on, it depends on your crowd. Yeah. Yeah, I I've think been so. a, I've, been, I've been a part of different crowds. I've been a part of the healthy crowds. I've been that's part of the true. not so healthy crowds. You go to a you go to a party with a bunch of bodybuilders. Trust me, it's just <laughs> green chicken. And I'm okay, serious. I've never been to one of those parties, so and I don't think the average person goes to those it's, parties. But it's just, that's what I'm saying. Like, and it's not like it's a bodybuilder party. It's just that's the you know those are my friends. Like when I was. Like most of a like I had my, my ex-wife went to a party once and she was like, I don't like hanging out with your friends. I'm like, she goes, they all make me feel fat. Like every one of them, the women, the men, we're all in. <laughs> I go, yeah, I guess so, huh? Because <laughs> we, we went to this party, a, a birthday on a on a boat in the marina, a friend of mine. And everybody was there. We were all pro bodybuilders, all, you know, it was like all big, like in their wives. It was, she was like, I need to get out of this one. <laughs> yeah, you know, that I think that's part of the whole like being able to get the right environment though too, right? When you surround yourself with people who want to have healthy changes and want to see you succeed in your healthy changes, then it, that can change your whole environment at the party, right? So you'll be around a whole lot more healthy food. So I don't think that's something that's unfathomable for people who don't have bodybuilder friends, right? It's no, no, no. That's why I said I've been on. I've that. been on both. I've been on both sides. Yeah. I've been on both sides, and and I go to those other parties, and I'm I'm hungry at the end of Thanksgiving because I ain't eating a lot of that stuff. <laughs> right. I'm serious. I don't. First of all, I don't. I'm not a to let to little little disclosure. I'm not a potluck guy. <laughs> 
because I'm a real finicky about how people cook. Yeah. They wash their hands. <laughs> Are you not going to Up Chuckarama or one of those great places? <laughs> I'm gonna pull hair out of my. <laughs> hey, that was like the place to go when I was younger because we had a huge family and all the kids under twelve got to eat for free. So we went to Up Chuckarama. Where's this at? Where's this the the corral? corral? Yeah, like the Golden Corral. Yeah. So I don't know if you have it in Texas or. No, anything. I've been around. Yeah. But I mean, Golden Corrals Chuck are Rama. everywhere. Golden you know Corrals Chuck are Rama? everywhere. Do you know Chuckarama? Never heard of Chuckarama. Okay, so Chuckarama was the golden corral that I grew up with, right? So we all used to call it up Chuckarama because <laughs> it would make you want to puke afterwards, right? Because you ate so much. I remember as a kid, I would have my ice cream and I would like try to stack it as high as I can because you make it yourself, right? Me and my sister would just sit there and like challenge to see who could like make the biggest ice cream cone, right? <laughs> But everybody under the age of 12 ate for free. So up that's where we would go. Up Chuckarama. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the only all time, only place, know only place you about. eat and lose weight after you leave because you throw right. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, I guess actually this made me kind of think of a good question for you. When you eat your turkey dinner, do you stick to the white meat or does that really? Um, I do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. I do a little both. Um, yeah, I do a little bit of both. I don't usually do um, dark meat when I, my normal life lifestyle. Yeah. Because it, look, it, look, the, the deal is this: is it's not one meal that kills you. It's a, it's years of, of eating certain foods that kill you, right? Mm -hmm. Cause atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, all kinds of issues, heart conditions, congestion, you know, just a lot of stuff. So I'm I'm always about accumulation over time. So I cut out crappy foods most of the time, but I still eat foods that aren't necessarily what we call healthy or clean. You know, I still like pizza, beans. I still eat a lot of that stuff. It's just that I don't do it a lot. That's all. I just don't do it a lot. Yeah. So that's kind of what, you know, when you guys, you know, over the holidays, if, and this is for people who are, are actually working on their eating, trying to be aware of it. This isn't for somebody who doesn't, who doesn't watch their eating because it, because it's just normal. But if you're actually trying and you're working on these things and you, you don't want the holiday to kind of set you back because it is very hard on people to get through the holidays and see 10 pounds on them. It's not so it's not psychologically healthy to be working towards something for 10 months out of a year. And then all of a sudden you just kind of throw it all to the wind in two months. It could be very you know, I've heard, how many people complain that God, it takes forever to get into shape, but you can get out of shape overnight. <laughs> Right. That's not nothing new to people. So yeah. I don't I try not to do that because it's not it's, it's very it's not depressing, depressing like that. But no one sounds happy when it happens. Yeah. They all sound a little dejected, like, God, I can't believe and it's going to take forever to get it off. And that's not really true either. But it, it, it just changes your mindset to a negative mindset. And, and it and, puts you back in a place to where you feel defeated. Yes. It's, yeah. 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 It takes you back to a place that you did that you wanted to get out of which yeah. is feeling feeling out of control, right? Yeah. And you're putting yourself, that's why the holidays are so hard for people with food is because they really believe that you're supposed to pig out. Like it's this weird thing that everybody, like everybody, do, everybody does it, not everybody, not everybody, <laughs> you know? And that's what I had to learn up and realize. I was like, I need to stop doing stuff just because everybody else is doing it. Well, how do you enjoy life if you don't just start stuff yourself throughout the holidays, right? <laughs> I, I think know. that's what people think. I think that they can't like, I know I say that because it's something that I really kind of thought in the past is like, how do I go through the holidays and eat healthy and really enjoy them? Because grandma makes her favorite dish. Mom makes her favorite dish. My sisters make their favorite dish and you just want to be able to have them all. But going into it, having a healthier, better mindset, I think is just the way to go. I know. And, and you can have a little bit of it. That's my, my yeah. point is have a little bit. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you eat good, I, I don't, how many times have I said this? If you eat crappy all the time, one a healthy meal ain't going to, ain't going to help you. If you eat good all the time, a bad meal ain't going to hurt you. It just, yeah. it doesn't work that way. It takes multiple bad meals over time to ruin a good thing. It takes multiple years of good eating and training to reverse bad habits. So, both of them take time. So yeah. one meal, enjoy it. Just don't gorge, but enjoy it.
definitely enjoy it. Because most people live for food. I happen, I just don't. But so I have, I had to go, okay, most people live for food. You don't. So you can say no a lot easier than most people. So I do, I do respect that. But you can, but you don't have to do it. I got to tell people, do you have to have the whole pie? One, you know, a slice ain't enough. Like, why you got to have the whole pie? <laughs> okay. So have some. Just don't get, just don't do it to a detriment to where at the end of the holiday, you're, you're depressed or you're upset yeah. because you took too many steps backwards. Because now you just kind of ruin the whole holiday. Think about this. Yeah. If you enjoy the holidays and then you, you finish it with that, you kind of put a damper on the entire holiday season just because you didn't, you couldn't back off of some cornbread or pop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not even like it's a huge, I'm not talking about don't eat it at all. I'm just saying eat, eat smaller amounts. Yeah. And I think too, one of the things that I've started to do and cause we actually have a lot of different groups that we're involved in my husband and I, and we're constantly going to gatherings to, uh, for all these different groups that we're involved in. And I think like with me, I've chosen instead of grabbing like a bag of chips and salsa to take to these gatherings, I end up bringing a vegetable tray or a salad, you know, and you end up eating the whole thing. <laughs> I end up doing, yeah, that is a true statement. I end up eating the whole tray myself. And taking it home and taking it back home. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like you kind of just need that crunchy, satisfying <laughs> feeling sometimes that comes from like chips and all like the bad foods, but still you get that from the vegetables. And actually after having the good habits of eating vegetables for so long, I actually kind of weirdly have started to crave them a whole lot more than I used to, which is- Yeah, I do. I do too. I like vegetables way more now than I did when I first started this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you stop eating a lot of different types of stuff, your uh, palate changes. You know, a lot of people, I've, I've had people, like I love strawberry cheesecake, right? And I like Sara Lee strawberry cheesecake, frozen out the box, right? Yeah. And most people were like, oh my God, that's gross, it's frozen. I don't know why I like it. I just like it. Like, <laughs> I don't, it's not like I'm, I'm making myself like it. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> and I've had a client one time, a client was like, oh, I'm going to make you a strawberry cheesecake. Trust me, you're going to love it. And I'm like this. Be careful what you wish for because my I don't, I don't control my taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> I may taste yours and, and it may, I might upchuck just like the restaurant. <laughs> or I might love it. But don't, I don't know. Be careful with this one. I don't know because I don't control that. <laughs> Did you like it? Or maybe we shouldn't say that on there. <laughs> God, it was so long ago. I can't even remember. <laughs> well, I think um, going to our next one, I'm going to actually read a little bit more into what they put here just because it helps you to kind of understand it a little bit better. But their number three was choose your splurges. Can can the buffet, oh, sorry, scan the buffet or dinner table and choose a couple holiday favorites to splurge on instead of foods that you can have any other day of the year? What I just say, yeah. <laughs> I eat stuff that I usually don't have. And I have a little yeah. bit of those things during the holidays because I don't have them normal. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. It's just, this is nothing. This is all just common sense up here. It's not really nothing. It's It's just really common sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so like for me, like I was telling you in the beginning, the one thing that I love to make is bread. Like I used to call myself a breadaholic because I love all different types of breads. I love the process of making breads. I make homemade bread. I used to make two loaves of homemade bread a week when I my kids were younger. And I quickly realized that I was gaining weight like crazy because of it, because I would eat one loaf for myself and then I had saved the other loaf for my family. Right. <laughs> So that's how my bread addiction was, right? And so I knew like I had to get away from that. So I don't bake bread as much as I used to anymore. So you sound, I, like, Bug, you sound like Bugs Bunny. One yeah. for you, one for me. One for you, one, oh. two for me. One for you, one, two, three for me. Oh yeah. I used to have a little bakery and I used to make these items and I'd be like, I'd have like one item for myself out of the bakery items that I'd actually sell and it, it was bad. Like I was just like blowing up like a balloon and I realized I had to change things. But, you know, the thing is, is <laughs> the 
the thing is though is that's like my splurge at these big holiday parties that I go to like I know I'm going to be asked to make my bread and I love my bread so that's but, it's, but that's, okay. that's okay you know? because you're taking it to a party and everyone's going to eat it so that's good because you I, I, I'm sure you don't bring no bread back home oh well <laughs> no oh, actually no, no I, don't bring, it. I don't bring it home because I, I, I never take that part out the house <laughs> I was gonna say like I, have I usually stash. have some, but I usually leave a few for my kids because they're you like, have a stash. You have a stash at the house. That's what you got. No, that's true. Actually, my bread is usually gone before I leave them. I bet it is. I so, bet it is. I know if I was there, it'd be gone because I love bread too. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my splurge. So I love that idea. Is just to know, like I know I plan to have that as one of my splurging items and. And I'm a pie person too, so I like both of those. So I like pies too. What do people always? People usually say, at least these clients over the last, you know, hundred years, they'll tell you, well, you know, I want to make this, I want to make that, I want to enjoy this, I want to enjoy that. You know, can I have those? Yeah. Then won't you just focus on those and leave all the other stuff alone? Because number one, if all you eat, try you could try this, eat only the the the, the, the crappy stuff you don't normally eat. You won't even you get full so fast. Cause you're not, cause you don't eat it. When you don't eat it, every one of my clients right now, with you haven't experienced this because we haven't dieted you that hard. <laughs> you've been taking, you've been lucky. But when you really, really, really get clean, your stomach shrinks and you can't eat that much. You just can't. Yeah. And a lot of them are like, God, I'm getting full so fast. You know, except except one girl. There's one girl I shot a video. She has to actually. She's kind of she's skinny fat. So I actually have her eating more food than she's ever eaten. And her di and her her scale the scale hasn't moved, and she's getting hungrier, and I'm giving her more food. <laughs> okay, and she her scale and the scale's not moving. That that's because she's very depleted, and she needs to fill out her muscle. So this, that's rare. There are very few people. I've only had like a handful of clients in 20 years that fit that. Most of them it's weight loss. So yeah, just um, I think I think if you if you pick those things that you just don't normally get that you really really like. And eat, you know, eat a small amount of that and a small amount of the cranberry sauce or the stuffing or the mac and cheese or whatever it is you want. Have it. Have some of it. Because it's only, you know, one day, two days. It's not forever. So. Or maybe have it's it that day forever. and then don't take the leftovers, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah there's no reason to bring it home. Why would I bring that oh. home? I don't want to. I mean, I'll bring some healthy stuff home. I'll bring some turkey. I'll bring the vegetables. I'll bring... You know stuff like that, but I'm I'm not bringing pies. I can get a pie anytime. I can get a I can get a pie twelve months out of the year. Why do I have to act like the holiday is special for pies? Like everybody's like, oh my god, Costco makes the best pie. Costco make pies all the time. There's always pies at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how you got to look at. It. And if you change the way you look at it, it ain't it ain't torture. Yeah. And that way, when you choose the certain things and you can enjoy them a little bit more, I think it's not torture. Not, yeah. My man, my thing is plan, plan your cheats. If you plan your cheat, you don't feel guilty when you do it because you planned it out. Yeah. And you portion sized it out in the whole nine. Yeah. Yeah. I've always liked that idea. We've had that conversation before. About yeah, we've talked about that before. Plan, that plan, your, yeah. plan, plan your cheat. Yeah. And I don't think that many people do. They're just like, oh, I cheated yesterday. Now, how am I going to get back on track? And then. Well, no, it actually, no, it extends. It extends yeah. two, three, four days because you didn't plan. But if you plan Saturday, then it's only Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. OK, so number four is think color. Make a plate look festive by including fruits and veggies. Aim to cover half the plate. So. I think that's a good one. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people kind of eat fruit plates and stuff like that during the holidays. So that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to expound on that one? Or is that one? I think no, that's kind of self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of self-explanatory. Okay. Choose drinks wisely. Stick to calorie-free calorie -free drinks such as water, tea, or seltzer instead of high-calorie festive drinks. Alcoholic beverages contribute empty calories and can cause you to make poor judgments with food. I had to read that because I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, I never really thought about that, but that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, that's when you're drunk. <laughs> Why don't they just say, don't get drunk. So you just don't eat up the whole, yeah, spend the whole evening sopping up mac and cheese to make so your stomach can sop up all that alcohol. 
<laughs> I know a lot of you guys have been in that mode where you're like, you're drinking and you're a little buzz and you want to come off your buzz. So you're like, how do I come off my buzz? I got to eat carbs. So all of a sudden you're carb loading to come off that buzz. No Delta 8, no weed and watch how much smoke, watch how much drinking because you will, you will eat your way to, <laughs> right. to a coma. <laughs> I know that's what I've done in the past is like, I just feel like I need those carbs because it helps to like soak it up, right? Because you sit there at the table, you unbuckle your pants, you're like, (laughs) (laughs) see, I just, that just wear sweatpants before you just, you know, you know, those pregnancy pants, just everybody just get a pair of those. (laughs) So so the elastic just stretches as you sit there. (laughs) Wait, what are we teaching here today? Well, those are for the people who ain't going to do what we're saying. <laughs> Get your stretchy pants out. You're either yeah, wearing nothing, pants or stretchy pants. Choose and if you can care out. less about any of this, just get some stretchy pants. <laughs> <laughs> There's a maternity section in most we're a, I'm a full service trainer. <laughs> if you're trying to get big as two houses... I can tell you how to do that too. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had these friends in high school that would actually, their family tradition was to go out on the Tuesday beforehand because there was like Taco Tuesday at like Taco Bell or something like that. And you could get all these tacos for super cheap. And so their whole family would go out and get like a ton of tacos and just stuff themselves because they were trying to stretch their stomachs out so that they were prepared for Thanksgiving dinner. And so it was a way of like telling their bodies that we need extra room in our stomachs so that we can have all that Thanksgiving dinner. And I know that there's people out there that still do it. When do they do do this? They would usually do it the two days before Thanksgiving. So they'd start on Tuesday. They'd get them all on Tuesday because Taco Tuesday was when you could get them super cheap. And then they would like have them again the next day. Yeah. Who Who told them that their stomach is going to stretch? just because of one Tuesday prior to Thanksgiving. Like, who, where did they even get that from? Like, who came up with that wonderful, wonderful I idea? Know. It's they not, first of all, it ain't true. One, one <laughs> meal can't stretch your stomach out. Otherwise, Thanksgiving meal would do it. <laughs> okay. That's number one. It takes time for your stomach to stretch to, to be able to allow food to come in. Copious amounts of food, anyway. So yeah. I, this is what's so funny, is somebody came up with that and people actually bought it. It's like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> it's not even true. You you are not going to stretch your stomach out because of Taco Tuesday before Thanksgiving. It's not going to work. Doesn't work that way. Yeah, and and maybe this is like a good conversation even to have about the bad traditions that we might have. You know, like if you're having traditions like that that are to try to expand your stomach for Thanksgiving dinner, maybe even some of those traditions are ones that you need to make new traditions in place of, right? <laughs> Yeah, I told I told you I'm a not, lot of weird stuff out there, right? <laughs> I'm not a traditional person. Like everybody's like, oh, your grandfather did it, and your great great grandfather did it, and you, I'm like, why do I gotta do it? Like I don't. <laughs> like you talk, you're back there in the 1800s now. Like what are you talking about? <laughs> like why am I doing anything people in the 1800s would do? <laughs> Plus we had like hardly any food at that time, right? They like what was that like? First of all, back in the 1800s, they weren't even cars. So people were walking and taking yeah. buggy, horse and buggy everywhere. They were more active. They were walking and they were working. Okay. Back in the 1800s. So it's a whole nother story compared to forget 1800s. It was people been walking and being busier up until the recent last 30 years. Yeah. People have been more active in, in, in their lifestyle. So, yeah. you know, the way we sit around now and the way all this technology and everybody's you know, you don't even have to drive your car no more. I mean, it's we're getting lazier and lazier and lazier. That's why the weight, people's weight are going up because everybody just doesn't have to. And, yeah. and then they find out when it's too late. So just, if you control your diet, you never have to worry about your weight. Now, you could still be out of shape. You need to exercise to be in shape, but you wouldn't have a weight problem yeah. or at least a size. You know, you wouldn't be heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next one. I really like this one because this is just part of our culture as human beings, but um, visit the people, not the food. So how many of us go into like family gatherings looking forward to the food? How about we try to put our mind towards the people that we want to visit? Because if you are having long conversations, you're not putting stuff in your mouth. So I kind of like that. And also, if you don't like some of the people that's coming to your house, don't invite them. (laughs) 
Okay. So those are the people that make you eat because you're like, I don't want to talk to him, so I'm just gonna stay over at this table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm serious. A lot of people well, just kind of isolate from people that they don't want to be around, and true. they go out in the back and they grab a beer or they grab some food and they get away from the who they don't, you know, who they're not happy being around. Yeah. Because like, I mean, I when I read that, I was like, yeah, and yeah, that works great if you enjoy the people that's at the house. Yeah. <laughs> right. You look at, you know, I'm serious. Are you looking forward to seeing them or not? Because yeah. if you're not looking forward to seeing them, it's a stressful day. Yeah. And you will be eating on a, on a stressful maybe day. That's, maybe that's one of those traditions that you need to change, switch up and make sure you, maybe you need to have a different type of Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, you know, with different people. Or maybe it's your in-laws and you don't like your in-laws. I don't know. Like that could be a thing. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. It's a tough one because a lot of people like, you know, their families are important, even though they hate being around them. Yeah. You know. True. Okay. So number seven is say no to food pushers, politely in parentheses. Ooh, we know about that, huh? <laughs> and I actually was going to bring this up earlier in one of our conversations earlier in the list about like the portioning your food. If you are able, this is the one idea that I was thinking of, is if you take a little bit of everything, then you've tried grandma's jello. And when she tries to keep pushing it on, on you, you can already say, hey, I've already tried some, right? Instead of like being like, oh, it's okay, I don't want any. And she keeps trying to push it on you and thinking, oh, you're not eating it because you're too skinny. You don't want to be fat, you know? I'm like, give, yeah, I'm a, I'll give you a way to deal with that. What you do is, if because they don't watch you the whole time you're there. Right. So if you don't want to eat it, say, hey, you know what? I'm going to eat some of that later. I'm, I'm going to eat this now and I'm, I'm going to knock, knock some of that out later. And they'll be like, oh, OK. And they just and they just don't do it. Right. Because they're not going to be watching you. And if they do, if they do ask you later, say, oh, my God, it was. So good. <laughs> right. They don't know. Like, you know, what I tell you, I don't lie. I don't like to lie. Yeah. But I will hear. <laughs> <laughs> Because it just makes my life easier. I don't have to sit there and do this back and forth with them. Yeah. So I just tell them what they want to hear. Oh, my God, it was great. Oh, mm, those raisins. I never had raisins in potato salad before. You know, <laughs> you know what? But that's, I think, part of the problem that we have is because we have so many relatives that bring all these different dishes and they and want, they want you to try them all. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, did you have some of my pie yet? Did you have some of my pie yet? You tried this person's pie. Why aren't you trying my pie? Right. They're watching. Some people watch. Like, Ooh, did you you. Yeah. 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 I used to be a, a photographer that I used to take pictures at weddings and stuff. And I, it, it was always the grandma that would follow me around and be like, did you take a picture of the cake? Did you take a picture of the cake? And I'm like, you literally watched me take a picture of the cake over here a second ago, right? But like, sometimes their memories aren't the greatest. So they'll come back up and be like, did you try my pie? Did you try my pie, right? So, you know, just having that already planned out, I think is a great way to go. You know, and maybe if you do try it and you don't really want it, Maybe if she's watching you, try a little bite and then turn around. I'm and walk telling you, just, you know, what they want to do is tell them you had it. They don't know. Yeah. yeah, just tell them how good it is, right? Oh my god, that was so good. Laugh. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, is that Marie Callender's? Is that Marie Callender's? No, Marie Callender's. <laughs> Depending on what grandma it is, she might be offended by that. I don't know. <laughs> if she's offended by Marie Callender, she's not respecting the OG. <laughs> right. <laughs> I could always do it. Have me some Marie Callender's. That's for Marie sure. Callender's is an OG. You gotta respect that. Put my put, put respect on my name. Banana cream pie. Mm, that's Man, they got every kind of pie you can think of over there. <laughs> I think that's my favorite one, or the satin chocolate one, right? Ooh, yeah, I've been there. I've been there on holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, savor seasonal treats. So we kind of already talked about that. The just to really like. Make room for the stuff that you don't have all year long, you know, that can actually be something different because you can have all the other food. Well, you know what? Everybody, here's the funny part. If you ask anybody, what do you miss? Well, what food do you, you know, if you could have one food, what would that be? Every, most people can tell you what that is. That's the one you need to have. That's the yeah. only one you really need to have. So what's right? your, what's your dreams? What's yours? That, what, during the year? Um... Yeah, for Thanksgiving. Probably, 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 sweet, probably sweet potato pie. Yeah. I don't like I do. stuffing. I yeah. ate stuffing when I was younger. I don't like it anymore. 
Uh -huh. um, so I don't I don't like stuffing anymore. I don't like pota potato salad anymore because I don't like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is gross. Um, don't like it. I love you know I like vegetables, turkey. I still like I like collard greens. I like the uh, the green bean casserole. You know, there's certain things I still like. Like mm -hmm. I don't eat cream sauce, but I'll eat green bean casserole when they do it. I just don't do a lot. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. You know, so I still eat stuff that I don't normally eat, but I, but I, but I'm like, I won't get this until unless now. So I'm gonna eat that. This I don't get until this time of year. So I'm gonna eat that. You see what I mean? Yeah. I can eat turkey any time of year. I can eat regular vegetables. I can eat a salad. You know, that's my normal food. I yeah. mainly stick, and I still have some of that, but I kind of focus on like, uh, once this is out, once this holiday's over, I won't have this again until next year. Yeah. That's kind of how I do it. Yeah, and I think that's a great way to do it because it is true. There are foods that you have throughout the year that you can constantly have. So why waste that calorie with those calories on it, right? And it's only I'm serious. It's one meal, really. It's it's really one day, one meal. It's not you know, it's not that many. So hey, hey man, hit the, hit the hit the foods you don't normally get. Yeah. Okay, number nine: eat until you are satisfied, not stuffed. So. We just kind of about that. <laughs> yeah, you know. I always I only eat till I'm content. Yeah. You don't want to spend Thanksgiving Day. Well, I don't know. I know in my past life, I don't know. <laughs> in my prior days, I would definitely want that full filling just because that was like my memory, right? I've like never I liked it. Thought Thanksgiving was, right? Oh, I I've love never, it. I've I fully had the stretchy pants. Like me and my friends would be like, I'm wearing my stretchy pants to Thanksgiving. So I I'm know, so I know uncomfortable. I, I hate it. I'm sitting there like, oh my God. I mean, I'm <laughs> so uncomfortable. I, I never like that that stuff feeling ever. Yeah. So once I think you're, when you're in these ha healthier habits and you're eating the right foods for energizing your body, then you actually don't have the desire to have that full feeling anymore. Like I know when I'm starting to get to that full feeling way before I even get to that full feeling now, because I just it don't take, enjoy it. It don't take long to get there either. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never, but even when I was a kid, I remember being uncomfortable. I never liked it. Really? Yeah. I loved it. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to just kind of, I, I don't want to eat something. And when I'm, as soon as I'm done eating it, I'm like, Oh my God, I can feel like, Feel like all I do is eat eat a couple of bites less and I'm fine. You see what I mean? That's how I look at it. Like I can eat the same food and be fine afterwards, or I can go a little over and, and be stuffed and miserable. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, I'm gonna be hungry in about three hours. I can have some more then, <laughs> you know. And that's what I always do. I'll go back when I'm hungry again, and then I'll maybe get something I didn't have earlier. Yeah. 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 Okay, number 10 in our final one is don't feel guilty. So I I think we've we kind of already discussed we just, over, we just went over that, right? The whole guilt, the whole guilt. We totally laid it out in like the first five tips they had there, right? <laughs> well, this is what I've been telling people for decades. Okay. This is that's why when you said it to me, I was like, I read everything. I was like, I, that's what I already tell people anyway. Because it's not that it's some secret, it's it's Understanding the psyche of people, understanding human, the way humans look at stuff, the way we all look at stuff, you don't want to turn a great holiday into a bad memory by gaining 10 pounds. You don't want to do it and then, like I always tell people, like they'll go on vacation and they'll say, well, can I do this? Can I do that? I'm like, first of all, you're on vacation. Like, I don't want you to be on vacation making a big deal of this. Just don't do something that you're going to feel regret after you do it. Because now you you put a, a kind of a dark cloud over the, the whole experience. Yeah. So if you're going to eat something, eat it. Yeah. Just eat it. Just go, you know what? I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to eat it. If you're not doing that all the time, you're not going to have a you're going to you're not going to have a ne negative experience. Yeah. If you're doing it with nine and ten things, trust me, you're going to have a negative experience. And that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the psyche of people who struggle with like if you struggle with weight. The last thing you want to do is keep yo-yo in your weight because you start to have issues with that. And I've had too many clients that believe like, I have, I can't control this. I, no, yeah, you can. You're not, but you can. <laughs> You're just not controlling it. Yeah. And they believe that they can't. And that's just not true. It's yeah. not true at all. But when you keep doing this, you believe it. You start to believe it. And what do we say? Perception is everything, right? If you believe you can't lose weight, then you you can't lose weight. Yeah. You have to change. You have to change the way you think about uh, eating, 
change the way you think about weight loss, change the way you think about putting yourself in a bad mental place by eating too much, overeating. Don't go to a eat, eat, eat enough to feel like you eat enough and go, okay, if I go any further, I'm going to start having some issues. Stop there. <laughs> Stop there. You know, and I think that it's just so easy for us to fall into those old habits, right? Especially when the holidays come <laughs> into play and we want to have those same feel goods that satisfy our bodies and the way that we think, right? And really, like, that's what I love about the challenge that we're doing is it's really setting us up to be able to make it through the holidays and enjoy the holidays, enjoy the foods and be able to put a stop to it after that one day and move forward so that we're not feeling negative. We're not feeling that disappointment in ourselves after the holiday season. And that's what the whole challenge is really about, is setting ourselves up to live healthier lives and to realize, too, that it's not so hard. To and, it's not so, and it's not so miserable. Yeah, like you can enjoy it's, these things. And the mis- people people think you're miserable. I've had people think I'm miserable because I don't eat crappy food. Somebody said to me, but you don't have any fun. And I'm like, what do you, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I didn't know eating a donut was fun. <laughs> well, I invite you to your next meal so I can see. Right. How- a donut tastes good. It's not fun. Like, <laughs> like I, you know. But what you said earlier, choose your drinks wisely. People eat more when they drink more. That's kind of, you know, that's a that's a fine line. Once you start tipping the tipping the the wine and the liquor, you, yeah. you start nibbling more. So just be just just I'm telling you, plan your dinner. Plan it. Go, okay, I'm going to eat a little bit of that. I'm going to eat a little bit of that. I'm going to eat a little bit of that. And that's it. Yeah. And then if you still feel like, you know, then you can, you know, start off with a little bit. Like I watched, you know, I, I had a, I went to a client's house once and she was trying to lose weight and she was like, I, I seen her go for, for potatoes like three or four times and I'm looking at her going, I don't get it. Like, oh, this is so this is so good. I'm like, ain't that good? Like three or four times. And it's okay if you like it, but why can't you put that in the refrigerator and do it again tomorrow night for dinner? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, you can eat this again when you're actually are hungry <laughs> and your body's gonna use the calories instead of just because what they're gonna do is just store. Yeah. They're only gonna I, store. It's too I, much. I think that we get into this bad habit too, because we were always taught, you know, by our parents, by our moms being like, are you full? Are you full? Did you eat this? And are you full? You know, and maybe that's kind of part of the lingo that I think maybe we need to change. I I, I think that we as adults, you know, you know me, okay. I I don't believe in taking the, taking the, the, the weak way out or the soft way out or the easy way out, letting you, I don't believe in letting yourself off the hook. Okay. At some point, we're adults, and we need to be responsible for what we do as adults, not blame our parents for stuff we do 40 years later. I left home when I was 19 years old. I'm 57. Yeah. Okay, I'm still doing things my mother told me to do that I know was not help, not in my best interest. That makes no sense. So I'm, I don't, if anybody, don't, I don't buy that. I'm doing it because of my parents. You know, you're doing it because you just like doing it. Yeah. You're used to doing it, and you like doing it. So that's the num- that's number one. Because then you take ownership of it, and then you can actually fix it. If you never take ownership of this thing, you can't ever fix it because it's not your fault. It's somebody else's fault. So what? how can your parents fix it? They're not raising you anymore. Some of them, you know, at my age, some parents aren't even around, right? So I'm going to keep blaming my parents. <laughs> Come on, that don't make any sense. Oh, my mother told me to wear. Like my mother used to always say, <laughs> Growing up in New York, it's cold. Cover your chest. You know, make sure you cover your chest because you don't want to get a cold in your chest. I was like, Ma, you can't get a cold just, you know. (laughs) I'm like, Ma, you don't get a cold because you're cold. (laughs) That's what they kind of grew up with, though, right? Like, they they didn't know anything other than that, right? So that's what they taught. And I guess that's probably what I was getting at is, like, we sometimes don't know why we feel the certain ways that we do, but it could be just something that our parents taught us that we've ingrained in ourselves that we haven't been able to separate that with, right? Uh, like, people, people nowadays are very, very specific. My parents told me to clean my plate. I've, I've heard this a thousand times. So they my keep parents that. told me to clean my plate. That's why I over, that's why I put two, two meals on one plate. Like, your parents didn't tell you to eat the whole dinner from everybody. You told your parents told you 
Because what happened? We were younger, a lot, at least me. I mean, you know, grew up, didn't have a lot, didn't whatever. So yeah, don't be wasting food. I know why my mother, I know why my mother said it. She didn't say it because she wanted me to, she wanted, she said it because she didn't want us wasting food. That's it. That's the only reason they said that. Yeah. And as you get older, you're supposed to make corrections to mistakes that your parents taught you or mistakes that you learned along the way. Like what is, what is the old saying? It's not, you're not responsible for the things that people that happened in the past that people put on you, but you are responsible for fixing it. You're responsible for fixing it, not them. So I don't buy the whole my parents thing, even though people use it all the time. It's not really true. It's just that they enjoy it. I get it. It's just a good but, excuse so that they can keep doing it. So they don't have to own it. <laughs> if I don't own it, then I can't fix it. Yeah. I don't have to fix something that somebody else somebody else owns. But if you yeah. if you own it, now you got to do something about it. You see what I'm saying? That's why people don't do it. It has nothing to do with anything other than if I admit that I know it's my responsibility, that means it's on me now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't feel like making that move. That's a hundred percent. I think that's like the problem with a lot of our bad habits that we have, right? Is we, it's easier to make excuses than to follow through with things because they can be hard sometimes. And when you first get started in anything you do, it's going to be hard. If you start a new job, it's going to be hard. It's going to suck for the first little bit, any health, nutritional, or any change you make in your life, it's going to be hard until you start making it a habit and doing it and and believing that it's not hard you know set up your mind to like believe that you can possibly achieve these things instead of saying no i can't do that you know set your mind right we've already kind of talked and about that and most so. and most people have done it in other walks in other parts of their life they just not they just don't do it here yeah like i know some super 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 successful people who can't control the, the dinner table but yet i'm like wait a minute you got like 100 employees a very successful business, you have no, and think about this, you have no control over those employees. You have rules set, you have boundaries set, but they can go back crazy if they want to. Look at Twitter and Netflix and all these people. We're striking because you got a comedian and we don't like all of his jokes. All right, then get the hell out of here. Like, what do you, you really think like you can control everybody just because you don't like a joke? <laughs> so we live, you know, we live in a weird, weird place where everybody, wants to not you know take responsibility just take responsibility for you and stop worrying about everybody else and and when it comes to this whole uh, eating thing it's really just about what do i want for myself do i want how do i want to feel after thanksgiving do i want to be happy about the holidays so that i enjoyed my food this is a great way to enjoy your food and not feel guilty and not gain weight yeah, I don't you feel guilty and you won't gain weight if you take some of this advice you know like I say, if, if all you, I'm serious too, you could just eat the crap. <laughs> Have a slice of pie, you know, just eat the stuff that you just don't forget the, the healthy food for that day. Seriously, just forget about it. <laughs> well, too, and don't forget that just because it's the holiday season that don't think that it's time to take a break from your exercise and still staying healthy, keeping your health, your heart healthy and all of that as well. I think that I've done that in the past where I'm like, oh, it's Chris the week of Christmas. I don't need to go work out because it's my time off, right? Still make healthy choices. Don't stop those healthy habits. And I think that is kind of like what we're trying to do is create healthier habits and stick to them so that we could really start this new year. Like, Well, most people who are people who take who are health conscious and live a healthy lifestyle don't change the way they eat because it's Christmas. Yeah. The only time people change is people who haven't adopted a new lifestyle. They're they're trying to adopt a new lifestyle. And so as soon as the holidays come, they start panicking. Yeah. Right? They start going, oh my God, the holidays because they haven't really owned, they're not really, they're not, they're not there yet. People yeah. who are have just changed, people who just a person, a diabetic, okay. If a person is a diabetic and they're dealing with their diabetes and they're actually dealing with it. They're controlling it. It's not out of control. They're what? They're not going to change the way they eat. It could kill them. Yeah. It could cause major problems, right? So why do we have to get sick to do the right thing? Why do we have to go? Why can't we do the right thing before we get sick? Yeah. And that's kind of what I did. You know, when I was younger, I noticed my father had heart issues. He had a heart attack. I was like, done. I'm watching my sodium. I'm doing this. And I started doing it when I was 24 years old, 25. And I changed my life ever since. 
just because I was like, okay, if that's in my family, if that's run, I need to do, I need to try to prevent it. Yeah. So it's really about making those, making those choices just for your personal experience. And then it's much easier to just go, ah, I'm not going to do that. You know what? I'm going to do this. It becomes way easier when you own the change. Yeah. That's all. Just if and you can own the change, you will, you will have, it'll, it won't be, it'll be nothing. You'll get through the holidays just fine. You won't put any weight on. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy the food you like. It'll be great. Yeah. And any last advice for those who are on our six week challenge that you or anything that you want to just motivate? Um, just, you know, guys, just I hope that you're proud of, of the choices that you made, that you joined the challenge. Um, we do these challenges just to help people make little changes that lead to total change later. You know, I I look back on my my career and nothing happened overnight. Everything took time. <laughs> I, I remember a guy at when I used to work at San Quentin Prison. I used to work on death row out there back in the 90s. And uh, one of my coworkers used to, I was talking about competing and I was competing, but I wasn't where I ended up. I was on the way up. He used to get on my back all the time about cooking. And he was like, you ain't never going to be a pro if you don't put an apron on. You keep eating out. You ain't going to never be a pro. Like he used to two years ride me like a, like a Bronco. And I finally was like, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so I know what it's like to fight it and fight it and fight it and finally give in. So I got here the same way everybody else is trying to get to where they want to go. It's not easy. Some people do it better. Some people are much faster than I, I was. Much faster than I was. It took me a while. <laughs> and I was competing. I was training all the time. I was still in the gym. I just didn't. I was lazy. I didn't want to do the cooking. I didn't want to do it. I just didn't feel like doing it. Yeah. And really, you guys, be honest with yourself and how you are with your goals because you're never going to reach the goal that you want to reach if you're not being honest with the time that you're putting into it and what you're actually putting into your mouth. So you guys be honest with yourselves. I mean, you're competing against yourselves. You're not competing against any of yeah, us. Right, 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 right. And also you don't need a lot of time. No one needs time. I, I love when people say they need time to eat better. You're eating anyway. <laughs> You know, like nobody take, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to eat. So if you're going to eat, what are you eating? Like people will kill me how they act like, oh, I don't have time. What do you mean? You don't eat? <laughs> 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 no, what you, you eat, you just eat whatever you, you just eat anything. Yeah. So when you do eat, eat the right stuff. And also when you do eat the right stuff, as you know, you don't get full and you're hungry again. Not to, you know, your metabolism speeds up when you, yeah. eat. by the way, folks, when you eat clean, your metabolism speeds up because it doesn't, the body uses the food faster. And then you're hungry again. A lot of people are afraid of being hungry because they think hunger is the problem. No, it's what you're choosing to eat when you get hungry. So you can lose weight during the holidays too. I had a girl lose 20 pounds over the holidays. I got a, you know, she lost, she was, she lost, she went from one, what is she, 150 to 130 over the holidays. Hey. <laughs> yeah, and she enjoyed it. Like when the holiday came, she was like, oh, Drew, what am I said, eat? Have a, good, have a good dinner. She was like, really? I'm like, yeah. You know? So trust me, I, I've done it with people before. I've done it. I used to compete every February. I died it through my birthday. I died it through Christmas, New Year's, Super Bowl Sunday. I died it through all of it. New Year, everything. For years. So if I get anybody, trust me, if you really, really want to, you could do anything. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Coach Idris. This was a fun Got topic. It. I had a lot Thanks of fun. mentally strong, guys. You could do anything if you really put your mind to it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Coach Idris. You have an awesome weekend. You got it. And a beautiful holiday. I didn't tell you that. Happy oh, Thanksgiving. My birth yeah, my birthday's next Saturday. Oh, is it? Happy birthday. Awesome. 57. <laughs> what? what? 57, what? Did you say 25? <laughs> I can't do that much. My youngest, my youngest one is 26. If I say 25, I'm younger than my daughter. I can't pull that one off. How'd you do well, that, Idris? I adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I adopted a daughter and a son that's older than me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, awesome. You have a happy birthday and a wonderful holiday. You got it. We will see you soon. All right. Yeah. Okay, you guys, this was such a fun conversation. I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I know that the holidays get really busy and it might be harder to stay on track, but I know that you guys will feel so much more accomplished 
by sticking to the goals that you guys have made. And if you haven't joined our challenge, still come and join our challenge because it's not about having the full six weeks or maybe do a full six weeks, just end it later than we do. But um, we welcome all and we want you all to be able to start living a healthier life. So you guys, love you guys. You have an amazing Thanksgiving and feel good about it. Don't regret anything. You guys are amazing. Happy holidays. See ya.